Today is all about trauma. Learn how to image trauma on a breast ultrasound. Complications from breast surgery or trauma that can be visualized on an ultrasound are number one, surgical scar, number two, seroma, number three, hematoma, number four, fat necrosis, number five, oil cyst, and number six, tissue edema. First, let's talk about surgical scars on ultrasound. On ultrasound, a surgical scar is going to be a subtle or a pronounced area of shadowing that most importantly must track all the way up to the skin line. The scar should be wispy, should have little bulk, it should be avascular. You may notice a swirling pattern of the tissue. There should be a visible scar on the outside of the skin, and the patient should have had a history of surgery. The word scar should be placed on the ultrasound image just above the skin line at the location where the scar begins. And this is essential for two reasons. Number one, you don't want the scar to be mistaken for an area of irregular shadowing in the breast. And number two, if the films are taken to another facility and sometimes reports aren't available right away, you want to make sure that the outside facility clearly delineates that area as a scar and does not mistake it for a mass. Next, let's talk about seromas. A seroma is a collection of serous fluid that forms within a surgical cavity. Basically, fluid fills up the empty space. The ultrasound appearance can be either a complex, a complicated, or a simple fluid collection, a cystic area, with posterior enhancement, It should be located within the surgical cavity, and you must see the scar on the ultrasound and the skin. It should be avascular, and they often have irregular margins. So sometimes you can see angular margins on these um, because it conforms to the shape of the empty space in the breast, and the surgical cavity can often be irregularly shaped. A seroma forms within the surgical cavity, the space in the breast. Uh, So we see these in lumpectomy cavities, mastectomy cavities, an excisional biopsy cavity, or at the site of a prior breast implant where the implant has been extracted. Next, let's talk hematomas. A hematoma is a collection of blood in the breast or the body. The patient will often have a bruise on the skin or a history of recent trauma. And most importantly, a hematoma must be distinguished from a mass in the breast that has a thick echogenic halo. Causes of hematoma are trauma or injury to the breast, surgery, breast biopsy, a patient taking blood thinners, or large pendulous breast. Evolution of a hematoma. The ultrasound appearance of a hematoma changes over time. The echogenicity depends on the age of the hematoma. When a hematoma is acute, in the very early stages, it's anechoic. As the hematoma coagulates over time, or ages, it gets more hyperechoic. The ultrasound appearance of a hematoma is an anechoic to a hyperechoic mass, depending on the age of the hematoma. It's a superficial mass within the subcutaneous fat layer. It will have hazy borders. It'll be an ill-defined mass. It will be avascular. It will be heterogeneous. In the acute phase of a hematoma, you may see enhancement. Or with an older hematoma, you may visualize posterior shadowing. And it all is dependent on the age of the clot. The classic appearance of a hematoma on ultrasound is a hyperechoic mass with internal cystic spaces. Distinguishing a hematoma versus a lipoma on ultrasound. A hematoma is going to have hazy borders. It's not going to be circumscribed. Often they'll have internal cystic spaces depending on the age of the hematoma. It's going to be heterogeneous and it may have posterior shadowing. Or a lipoma is going to be circumscribed. And a lipoma is the only breast mass that has a true capsule. A lipoma is going to be homogenous in echotexture. It's going to be isoechoic to hyper Echoic. When it's isoechoic, you often can visualize little white Cooper's ligaments running through them. There's no internal cystic spaces or posterior shadowing associated with a lipoma. It can be tough to distinguish a hematoma from a mass in the breast with a thick echogenic halo, also known as desmoplasia. Here are some things to help guide you. A hematoma is going to be avascular. It's often going to have anechoic internal cystic spaces.
cases, though not always. It's gonna be superficial within the subcutaneous fat layer. The patient is gonna have some sort of history of trauma, surgery, be on blood thinners, or have large pendulous breasts. There has to be a reason for a hematoma. And the hematoma is gonna have hazy borders that kind of blend into the fat around it. While a mass with a thick echogenic halo or desmoplasia, usually the mass itself is going to be markedly hypoechoic with the brighter, thick echogenic halo surrounding it. The mass is going to have irregular margins. It's going to be located within the breast tissue, the mammary layer. Most commonly, you're gonna see internal vascularity, and that mass is gonna have suspicious features on the mammogram, which will help characterize the mass. And that thick echogenic halo is gonna have really angular and irregular margins compared to the hematoma, which is gonna have hazy borders, but the margins on desmoplasia are a lot more irregular, angular, sharper margins. Next, let's talk about fat necrosis. And fat necrosis and oil cysts, which is the next topic, really go hand in hand in ultrasound. I separated them out for purposes of this presentation, just so you can see the small distinctions between them. But often, where you find one, you'll find another. Fat necrosis is fatty tissue that has experienced trauma, and necrosis basically means tissue death of the cells. And this results in fibrosis, necrosis, and calcification of the tissue over time. Causes are from biopsy, surgery, radiation therapy, some sort of injury or trauma. Patients on blood thinners are more susceptible to tissue injury. Uh, a patient with large fatty pendulous breasts, this is where the weight of the tissue can cause the tissue necrosis. The ultrasound appearance is a heterogeneous mass that's avascular. It's going to have a calcified rim either partially around it or completely around it. And it's going to have very distinct posterior shadowing due to the calcified portions. It's going to be complex with both solid and cystic components to it, and it's going to be located superficially within the subcutaneous fat layer. Next, let's talk about oil cysts. And fat necrosis and oil cysts really go hand in hand. So when you see one, you often see the other, though not always. An oil cyst is a cyst with shadowing. It's the only time that you're going to see a cyst shadow. And this is because an area of fat liquefies and it comes oily and textured, usually due to trauma, and that thick oily substance produces shadowing posterior to the cyst. Causes of this are the same causes as for fat necrosis. Biopsy, surgery, radiation therapy, an injury or trauma, patients taking blood thinners because they're more susceptible to tissue injury or large fatty pendulous breasts, and this is where the weight of the tissue can cause tissue necrosis or death. Ultrasound appearance is going to be a cyst with shadowing. The cyst is going to be avascular. Often they're going to have some very low-level internal echoes within this cyst. They often will have either a partial or a complete calcified rim, which is another reason for that posterior shadowing of the cyst. They're going to be round, avascular, and found within the subcutaneous fat layer of the breast. And last but not least is tissue edema on ultrasound. And this is tissue edema that's specific to the breast itself. And this is fluid within the superficial layer of the breast tissue. And often this is due to damage or trauma or obstruction of the superficial lymphatic vessels where the lymph can no longer drain and build up in the tissue. But tissue edema in the breast can also be due to congestive heart failure. This is where edema builds up throughout the body. It can also be due to surgery and or a history of previous radiation therapy to the chest. Ultrasound appearance of tissue edema is fluid within the superficial layers of the tissue. There's going to be a thickened skin layer and this is from fluid within the skin layer, and the skin layer is going to measure greater than two millimeters in the AP or height dimension. And it's going to be avascular on ultrasound. Symptoms of tissue edema, the patient may or may not have cellulitis, and this is an infection of the skin in subcutaneous fat layers, where there's going to be pain, redness, heat, and skin thickening. Another symptom is breast hitting, and you'll see a pewdie orange skin appearance, and the patient may also experience pain, and there's going to be swelling of the breast itself. Like, comment, and subscribe if you are interested in more videos on ultrasound and tune in for our next videos on Wednesdays.